Hello my friends, welcome back to my channel and welcome back to this series. I'm responding to this uh, gentleman who responded to one of my posts that said that passive stretching is dangerous and will cause more harm than good. So if you know anything about me, you know that I'm the stop stretching policeman. <laughs> and this series that we're actually doing is an introductory series to the stop stretching police. Of course, it's all done in jest and fun, but part of the intention of this series is to educate you and give you some more information on the damages of stretching, but also how to process what's being said out there because there's a lot of erroneous perceptions and this kind of response to my post is someone who has a lot of erroneous perceptions. One of the things that I really want to just kind of convey right off the bat is that it's when we have beliefs about the world and beliefs about who we are, we tend to grab on to just different practices and different ideas to reaffirm our sense of self. It is really scary as a yoga teacher to let go of this idea of stretching, to let go of, of yeah, to stretch. I mean, I can't tell you how much backlash and how many really nasty people out there have, have made very direct comments about, oh, how can this person call himself a yogi if he's telling people not to stretch? And that's also part of my mission is to flip the script on stretching and flexibility and bring people back to what yoga is really about, which is this opening up the doorway of possibility within our own mind to manifest and live our life purpose. Nowhere in the yoga scriptures uh, does it say anything about the need to run off with the circus and put your feet behind your head and be able to stand um, on your head uh, for that matter. So I'm trying to debunk a lot of these kind of myths and you know, we're often plagued by myths, you know, several hundred years ago, there was the myth that the earth was flat and it took several hundred years for people to kind of get over that idea. Not that I'm equating stretching to it, but I'm trying to draw a parallel to the idea that it is hard for us to move on from our erroneous perceptions. One of the reasons why I'm on this bandwagon, like I said, is to flip the script in the yoga world and bring people back to yoga's true intention, but also because I've experienced firsthand the damages of stretching and what it's done to me. And it took me 25 years to figure out that, yeah, I probably shouldn't stretch anymore. I ended up in a surgeon's office, an orthopedic surgeon's office, and that orthopedic surgeon told me that I might need a spinal fusion. And that was a huge wake up call for me to kind of like start to realize, Hey, maybe what I'm doing isn't working. So what did work? Well, we're going to kind of dive into that a little bit here. So I'd like to turn your attention to this post and I'm just going to kind of back up because some of you might have missed um, some of the uh, first uh, things that he said. So he said, fact, Flexibility fact checked is passive stretching dangerous. And so we kind of get in here and I put, you know, all passive stretching is too much stretching and I still stand by it. <laughs> um, and we kind of talked about this second slide in the last video so you can catch up with it if you want to. But here, one of the points that I made here, and I kind of talked a little bit about this in the last video, was that your muscle spindles that are your stretch detectors. So they sense when your muscles are, are in a lengthened or in a shortened state, and they're constantly talking to the central nervous system. When you stretch, you unload these muscle spindles. So to kind of recap really quickly, muscle spindles are like slinkies, you know, and you take a slinky out of the box and a fresh new slinky and it's all coiled up. Now, if you tell your friend to grab one end of the slinky and run away as far as you can, you're going to stretch that slinky out. That's not a good thing because that slinky is not going to return to its coiled state. Now, unlike slinkies, muscles do return to their coiled state. However, the length of time that they return to that coiled state depends on a lot of factors your age, how old you are. So if we look at a 16 year old 
who can, you know, like especially a gymnastics 16 year old who can do these amazing things. But as they get older, a lot of these gymnasts, their bodies start to break down in very detrimental ways. And I've seen so many of these gymnasts who come into my yoga class and are dealing with pain. Pain is always a sign that the muscular system is not stabilizing the joints and the, and the bones of the body properly. And so the result of it is inflammation and, and how we feel inflammation is through pain. Unfortunately, a lot of us just take, you know, aspirin or anti-inflammatories to get rid of it. We actually never deal with the root cause of it, which is muscles are not working properly. Muscles are not stabilizing the joints properly. So when you start to stretch those muscle spindles, they start to lose the ability to connect or to communicate properly to the central nervous system. The job of the muscle spindle is to stay or is to move into a coiled state. That's their job. And so when they start to elongate, um, you can, they don't go back to that coiled state very quickly and they're not communicating properly to the central nervous system. You can actually do several tests with this and I kind of talked about this in the last video. I can test the force output of a muscle and I can test if it's the muscle has that ability to contract and contract on demand. What I'm really starting to test or what I'm really testing is those muscle spindles and their ability to contract and be able to stabilize a joint properly. Um, and you can also do these tests at home yourself. I would encourage you to do some tests. You can test your uh, hip flexors, for example. You can get them strong and you can do a leg raise and see like, oh yeah, there's the strength there after doing a muscle activation. Um, you can then do a very simple stretch called child's pose and come into child's pose for 30 seconds. Child's pose, as many of you might know or remember, is always the number one pose to avoid because it shuts down five different groups of muscles. It shuts down your trunk rotators, your trunk flexors, your trunk extensors, your hip flexors, and your hip extensors. So these are really five important muscles, groups of muscles that stabilize the trunk and spine and your hips. A lot of people have pain in their hips because just kind of going to these five groups of muscles, they're not working properly. So you can do a pose like child's pose, which is going to shut down all of those muscles and then go back and do a leg raise and you can feel that that force output does not return and you're left in a weakened state, which is not how you want to move through life. It's not how you want to go to the gym. It's not how you want to exercise or go for a run. So, you know, if you want to get into the science, be your own guinea pig and test this stuff out and see what happens. Now, one of the comments that this guy makes and other people make is, well, the strength does return. The question is, is like, well, when does it return? And as I said earlier, if you're a 16 year old, sure, it's going to return really quickly. You know, your, your body is pumped with human growth hormones um, and different other hormones, of course. You're growing still, you're developing. But if you keep putting stress on the body and add age and then other traumas, you're going to have a body that or a muscular system that is not working properly. And in the neuromuscular system, the communication uh, pathways become compromised. So he said that the claims made here are physiologically inaccurate. No, I'm sorry, they're not inaccurate. <laughs> Stretching loads, muscle spindles, the discharge frequency, the rate at which signals are to the central nervous system. A primary sensory neurons increase while muscles lengthen and the secondary uh, sensory neurons discharge while the stretch is held. A mechanical tension, the stress imparted on muscle fibers and their associated spindles is the specific loading stimulus that causes these uh, changes in the spindle discharge rates. So yeah, some of that might be true, but the fact is, is that the muscle spindles um, are not contracting properly. 
But more to the point, um, there's no communication system between these uh, muscles, the intrafusal muscles and the central nervous system. And as I pointed out in the last video and the video before, that the whole kind of argument for why you should stretch is that you actually become less sensitive. And that sensitivity happens in the intrafusal muscle fibers and that communication system between those and the gamma motor neurons that go to the central nervous system that actually starts to stop for a certain period of time. Um, it's one of the reasons why people say that stretching gets easier is because you become less sensitive. From our perspective, we actually want to increase the sensitivity of those intrafusal muscle fibers so that we have a muscles that are able to contract and contract on demand. Um, as we go through life, we need those muscles to contract and contract on demand. If you bend over, for example, you need all the muscles of your core to shorten properly. Um, if you reach up for the shampoo bottle in the shower, you need muscles that are going to engage to do that. And how many times have you heard stories of people when they do reach up for that shampoo bottle, they get a kink in their neck or they sneeze and their lower back seizes up. That's because the communication system between the uh, muscles and the central nervous system has become compromised. Um, and so what we want to do is improve the neuromuscular communication system. And that's why we're looking to do muscle activations as opposed to stretching. So this is kind of like, I would say wishful thinking because on paper, some of this stuff sounds nice, but in reality, it's not. I've given you the science behind why it is, and we can also test it. And one of the things that my teacher, Greg Roscoff, always says, and Greg is the owner and the creator of Muscle Activation Technique. He's my teacher, and I, I, he's just full of so much knowledge. But one of the things that Greg constantly says is, how do we know if something works? How do we know if something's making you stronger or if it's making you weaker? Well, we can test. We can test whether that muscle is working or not or if it's not working. And for me, that's always the end game. Like we can argue back and forth, but I can always go and test people. And when you stretch and then you can feel that the muscle has turned off basically. It's one way of saying it, that the muscle has basically turned off. And it's literally like as if someone has taken a switch and turned off the light in the room. It just doesn't work. And I can test it again and again and again, and it will always test weak after stretching. So I don't think again, that's the way that you wanna move through life. So let's look at the next slide here. Stretching is dangerous. Yes, it is dangerous. I will stand by that because it leaves you in a weakened state. Now, for example, for me, I'm a hiker. I love hiking. And by the age of 30, I had to hang up my hiking shoes. Why is that? Because my knees were killing me. The one of the last hikes I did around that age, I remember I couldn't walk for three days because my knees were completely swollen up. Well, what had happened was, because of all the stretching I was doing, I had no stability in my knee joints. And so one of the things that stretching does is it causes and it creates more instability in the knee joints. If I try and do all these stretches in my shoulder and then I go and add loads, i.e. I go and work out in the gym, I'm gonna create more problems in my shoulder joint because now all the tendons and the small muscles, usually the rotator cuffs, are trying to maintain stability of this big, huge shoulder joint rather than relying on some of the major muscles to maintain the stability. I've now destabilized my shoulder joint by working out. Or if I don't work out and I go and pick up a bag of groceries or Again, I reach for that shampoo bottle. I have no stability in that shoulder joint. So when I say that stretching destabilizes the joints of the body, that's what I'm really talking about, okay? 
So we're going to leave it there for now. I've talked long enough. Um, we'll maybe come back again to this post one more time or we'll kind of look at some other things because there's a lot of other things that I want to comment on and a lot of erroneous perceptions out there. One of them is opening up the hips. Now, chew on that for a while. What does it really mean to open up the hips? Or another one, open up the shoulders. Oh my God, people, please. The last thing we wanna do is open up our hips and shoulders. So put a pin in that for now. And remember, stop stretching, start activating, because the stretching police might come and find you. <laughs> Have a super wonderful day, friends.